I am here at Microsoft's new inclusive tech lab that the company is relaunching uh, this week. It's basically a space that's been designed from the ground up for the company to communicate with the disability community as well as the tech community at large. The new inclusive tech lab is the successor to an earlier version on the West campus that the Xbox team opened in 2017 when it was developing the adaptive controller. This is a 2,000 square foot room that's about twice the size of what Microsoft had before when it designed the Xbox adaptive controller. And it's really, like I said, designed from the ground up. So if you look, there is the paneling on the floor. It's been sectioned off into different areas that are tactilely different from each other so that people who might be walking around with canes can be able to feel the difference and know that they've entered, for example, a different section. We'll get into the different sections of this room in a little bit, but I also want to draw your attention to the ceiling where there are sound bafflers and the walls are also made of a felt material. The ceilings here have felt baffles and the room itself uses felt walls that can help suck sound for clearer audio when people are in the room so that those who have limited hearing will have an easier time understanding what's being said. In general, there are four main sections to this space. There is almost half the room dedicated to a live and workplace scenario. And then there is a classroom space, conference space, and then a sensory area. And we'll get into all of that in a minute. Let's start with the live and work area. This is basically what Microsoft envisioned initially to be a workspace that's kind of like a real office and also a living area with gaming setup and stuff like that. But because of the pandemic, they've had to make changes. And so the, the office space is more like a home office now. The idea is that these spaces are created for Microsoft and people with disabilities and other tech companies, be it Microsoft's own competitors, for example, in the space to come in and have really sort of a powwow on what works for people with different needs and what doesn't. So for example, over here, we've got a Surface Laptop Studio connected to a Braille display and an audio scale. And in the background, you also see there is a cup with a, a tell me when sensor that lets uh, the person pouring know when the liquid is near the top. These are great demonstrations of what tech not only Microsoft makes, but that third parties also offer that can make life a little bit easier for people with different needs. Over in the living room area, we've got, of course, the company's adaptive controller setup, but there's also a game set up for one-handed use or different limbed uses uh, over here and of course if you're a member of the disability community that wants to come and check this out for yourself you can Microsoft said it is opening this space up to the public of course you're gonna have to request uh, with the personnel to come and visit so over across the live and workspace is what Microsoft's uh, inclusive tech team envisions as sort of an idealized classroom, where basically you get to think about what people in a classroom setting would need, but without thinking of accessibility or assistive tools as something that's special or different in some way from the general population. And so the desks here that they've chosen aren't the ones that you'll see in all learning institutions. The team says it's deliberately designed its space this way to show what is possible when it normalizes assistive technology and avoids othering the idea of technology that's inclusive. Each desk here features different devices with assistive tech built in, including Microsoft's Surface Adaptive Kit that was released last year. There's also over here a Surface Laptop SE with a JCPel keyboard skin that brings increased visibility and tactility to its buttons. Also got a lot more tactile cues for people who might need that extra information when they're touch typing. In the front row, there are augmentative and alternative communication or AAC devices, like a Surface Go 3 in a Target's case with speech generating software, as well as a computer with a Toby eye detecting sensor connected. Over now to I think what's the most visually interesting uh, corner of the room, this is the sensory space. Now Microsoft was telling us that in situations like classrooms or maybe in some museums, they have set aside these special sensory spaces to help people who may be neurodiverse or just have a need for a bit more sensory stimulation to come in and have an experience. The main attraction of this corner and 
arguably of the whole lab, is this jellyfish. It's a domed light fixture with 300 strands of slightly wavy, color-changing fiber optics dangling from it in a ring. When Microsoft's executives turned down the room's lights and fired up the tentacles, I got inside and played with the color-changing wires. The idea here is the tactile and visual stimulation from being inside the jellyfish can be helpful to those who just need a bit more of a sensory transitional space. But Microsoft told me that this is an area that it's new in its understanding of how neurodiversity and hardware interact, so there's still a lot more evolution that could happen in this corner. The rest of this area is obviously very brightly colored. You've got all kinds of plush toys. You've got the beanbag chairs. You've got little um, steps here for people who want to do like a floor is lava sort of situation. It is helpful to distract you from what might otherwise be bothering you. A soft low pile rug in Minecraft green spreads across most of this section for people who might want a soft surface to crawl or lay on. There's a lot of little touches to this space that Microsoft thought of too. For example, the double door entrance that you just saw that I had, it's in there just for grandeur. It really is to uh, built with people using wheelchairs in mind. While some other motorized doors may be ADA width, people with wheelchairs can still have a hard time fitting through them if they're carrying bags or bulky items. So this double motorized door really allows more clearance. And of course, this space isn't just experiential, it's also got educational aspects to it. The main sort of info counter when you first enter the space also has a screen behind it that is sharing information about things that the disability community um, experiences, things like census information or job data. Finally, there's a little area here that's a conference space for Microsoft to help envision what it would be like for members of the disability community as they go back into sort of a hybrid workspace and may need to come back to physical meeting spaces. So that was just a very brief tour of this uh, space that Microsoft has built. It is very thoughtful. They might not be the first to have an accessibility-minded space. And also bear in mind, this is the inclusive tech lab. So it's not just about disabilities of a certain form, it's a wide spectrum. The responsibility of making inclusive design an industry standard doesn't and shouldn't lie with Microsoft alone. More companies need to be proactive and determined to make sure their products don't leave people out. A dedicated inclusive tech lab may not be the approach for all businesses, but the determined mentality that Microsoft's team clearly has is something that they all should strive to emulate. But I am hopeful that with the opening of this space, Microsoft is able to broaden its efforts to reach out to the community and then come together and really realize that inclusive design is really a must have from the ground up. For more coverage of Microsoft's Ability Summit, as well as news from the consumer technology space, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.